kid, YouTube! Look at this pea shooter head! This is awesome! <laughs> I'm gonna go ahead and wear this. It's my pea shooter mask. But anyway, my name is Dr. Kendo, and this is the Scribble Knots Unlimited Object Editor Commentaries, where I basically create whatever is voted the most popular or most requested by the most different amount of people, objects, items, characters, and whatever in the Scribble Knots Unlimited Object Editor. So we're starting off with a boa as the source object, and as you saw from my crazy head mask thing, the pea shooter is what we're gonna start off with. Be sure to notice where I have moved the little different pieces of the grid. You know, you can turn on, you see in the top right corner of that panel of different, I guess, controls or actions that you can do in this game. Uh, it's over on the left side of the screen. That's the panel that you can use. But in the top right corner, there's a little thing with like Maxwell's head and some fruit. Basically, it turns on this green grid system where it shows all the moving parts of your creation. And so I just wanted to be sure that you knew exactly where we were moving everything. The head is, of course, on top for the boa, but then it's different pieces of the body were arranged in a different way. So we're gonna take the letter I for these two pieces of the boa's body, and that's basically gonna be the stem, or you know, the body, quote-unquote, of the plant, the pea shooter. And so, uh, I'm gonna actually just use the tail end of a snake to be the little leaves that are down at the bottom of the pea shooter, basically at the base of the plant. And so, uh, the reason for this is, of course, I feel like it actually looks a little bit better in shape compared to the leaf. You know, leaf might be the kind of thing that you think first to use. A leaf also has a little line coming out the back of it, which is not necessarily a bad thing, but you would then need to make sure that you don't really see the lines or whatever, or have them matched up where you want them to be, basically. And so then an egg is gonna be for the head, and the letter I is actually, we're gonna do it twice, but right now I'm doing the bottom one. It's basically gonna be for the mouth, just to show that the mouth is a little bit longer, and uh, the positioning of the mouth, I guess, for the pea shooter. So we've also taken a halo. You can either grab it from one of these, uh, it's like a special items library, of shapes, or you can just type in halo, and I put an oval in amidst that just because it shows that the mouth is deep dark green basically inside uh, underneath the halo, and so dots are going to be for the eyes. You saw that we put the uh, letter I up top as well, as I said I was going to do it twice. Now from the 29 page library, on the 22nd page there's this arm shape, it's kind of in near the middle of the page. This is going to be sort of at the base of the head, you know, so they have like a little green, I guess, line type shape or whatever. It looks a lot like that arm, so that's why I use that. Uh, little white dots to be the glowing glimmer of the pea shooter's eyes. I should say light glimmer. And so then we've got a leaf with a fang on the end, just to show that there is some folding over of the leaf, you know, to give it some dimension and depth to it. But that's going to be for the back of the pea shooter's head, so it looks like we're good to move on. So whenever I'm doing this, the properties or the scripting, you know, it's a little bit slower paced and not as much action going on in the commentary. So for this part in my series, I like like to read background information and fun facts about whatever it is we are creating. So, Plants vs. Zombies I'll just talk about in general, not the pea shooter exactly, but just the game in general. I think we're kind of orientating towards uh, Plants vs. Zombies, like the first one or two games maybe, so that's, you know, what you should keep in mind while we're reading this and while we're designing our characters today. But it's a tower defense kind of game that involves players using various plants to prevent an army of zombies from entering their house and, of course, eating their brains. The game made its debut on May 5th, 2009, and you can now find at least one version of Plants vs. Zombie games on just about every relevant platform from 2009 on until, well, somewhat now. I mean, I don't think there's a Wii U one, but that's why I said just about every platform. But yes, PVZ seems to have received a positive response from critics, and over time it was nominated for multiple awards. While I haven't actually played Plants vs. Zombies, I know that I would probably really like it because I'm a big time fan of tower defense related games. But one thing I also like, which I found through my research, is the plethora of cultural references throughout the game. Things like the gravestones inscriptions saying expired, ceased to exist, just resting, and so on, were taken from the dead parrot sketch in Monty Python. There are two levels called Scary Potter and Ace of Vase, which are inspired by, of course, Harry Potter and the band Ace of Base. I think there's also a level called All Your Brains Are Belong to Us, which is naturally inspired by the Zero Wing games All Your Base Are Belong to Us. I even read that one of the names planned for the game was going to be Lawn of the Dead, an obvious play on Dawn of the Dead. But for legal reasons, it was changed in the end. I'll end off by uh, kind of saying that you can pretty much tell just how popular the game was, or is, whenever you 
you just research its reception, I mean, pretty much the lowest score was an 8.5 out of 10 from GameSpot, and that's still a good score. So you guys voted on Plants vs. Zombies being the most popular request, and you didn't really specify which characters, for the most part, you know, the most popular thing just said Plants vs. Zombies, PVZ, Plants vs. Zombies characters, and so that sort of left me to my own devices to try to create which plants and things from the game uh, I like the best, I guess. <laughs> so we're basically just setting up the last bit of scripting here, you know, you probably saw that it's uh, the pea shooter is set up to destroy monsters and uh, I've also typed in of course now for another destroy script I want it to well I typed in undead but then it's giving me a uh, general category so I picked Halloween so that's kind of what I'll do for any other plants and stuff that we create here uh, let's give it a name pea shooter of course is what this is called oh whoa it looks all messed up I mean the reason that I chose the boa of course is so that it could kind of do this little movement so like when you set them down in plants versus zombies, they don't just stand completely still, they almost do like a little dancing type looking movement, you know, just sort of a swaying side to side sort of thing. So that's what I wanted this uh, pea shooter to do. I've also set it up so that when you create it, you know, when you first uh, create it, it shoots out a pea, but of course pea is its, uh, and that's P-E-A, everybody, um, a pea is what it basically shoots out of its mouth as its main projectile. But here you can see it, I mean, it's like, to me, it's reminiscent of Plants vs. Zombies in that you can like set them up in rows, because Scribble Knots, you know, it's kind of 2D like that, of course, Plants vs. Zombies has different, you know, 3D planes in the aspect that you could put some above some of the others, but then you can, like, have little lines. So this is, I feel very reminiscent of it because we're going to put a zombie down right here and the plants just start shooting at it because that's what I've had them scripted to do. It looks like, though, when you have two plants, you know, one behind the other one, they do shoot each other. So you do have to have uh, them spaced kind of far apart. Otherwise, they will shoot each other. The one in back will shoot the one ahead of it. So then, of course, they get angry and the two plants will fight. And <laughs> so legit. Logistically and scribble dots, you know, it doesn't work exactly the same, but it's okay. I mean, to me, again, it's really reminiscent of it. So I did want to show, though, that we have created some of the other plants. Uh, one of my favorite ones probably is the snow pea, just because not only do I like the design and everything, but I like its uh, slowing effect. Whenever I play tower defense games, I love those towers that kind of like freeze or slow the enemy. And so I'm actually uh, going to go into the scripting here. I need to do some editing for that, but basically I'm just going to have it, um, you know, it's a little bit harder to do it through projectiles and things. So I'm just going to make an easy script for us that shows basically whenever this uh, plant, the snow pea, sees a zombie or sees Halloween, I should say, we're going to wait a set amount of time and then it's going to shoot out a big icy blue pea as its, uh, you know, projectile. But then it's also going to add an adjective to the trigger target, which is slow moving. So that means, of course, our zombie will slow down. So there, you just saw it right there. The zombie was moving normal speed, but then our pea shooter has it slowing down a good deal. Did I say pea shooter? I mean snow pea, of course. Um, but yes, the snow pea right now, I have it shooting out a circle because I know that the circle in this game is blue, but also because, you know, you can do via the scripting tool, you can do a blue pea, but if you're just doing the projectile, you know, when you edit projectiles in the properties editor, like what they're going to shoot all the time, the pea will just come out as a green pea, you know, it won't be blue. So that's why I've done the circle. You could also do an ice ball or a snowball, but those are kind of big in my opinion. So that's the only reason I didn't do that. Uh, so we've got the cherry bomb here. I just started off with a bomb as the source object and I created leaves up at the top. The bodies of the cherries are the body of a duckling. So I just took duckling and took the body part and uh, a rat tail is going to be for most of those eyebrows right there. As well as you probably saw a toothpick. A hemisphere shape is one of the eyes as well as a pearl is the eyes with a pimple to be the little green dot in their eyes. A sugar cube is actually for the teeth. You know, they have these kind of buck teeth almost uh, hanging out. And so we're going to, of course, edit their scripting for that uh, when you create create the cherry bomb basically so just do is created make it explode and so you can even give it a countdown before it explodes you know I've got it just waiting a little bit of time like one second or something like that and then it'll explode so let's test it out maybe against a zombie here we've got the zombie on the map cherry bomb I mean I know it's probably gonna work just because I just saw it explode <laughs> yep there it goes so there it exploded the zombie so moving right along I know you know we're moving kind of fast but I've got a lot of characters here so this is the walnut so you can start off with pretty much any sort of you know, object that's just going to stand there, that's just going to sit there in one place. You could start off with like a fruit of some kind, uh, an apple, an egg. Well, if you do an egg, you don't want to drop it from too high of a height because it'll break it and turn it into yolk. So uh, anyway, we've got a stone or a rock basically as the two different pieces of it. You know, your inclination might be to do like a potato or something or like a certain kind of nut basically because it looks like a potato or a nut in Plants vs. Zombies. But I feel that when you do like potato, uh, it, it has 
has just a bunch of dots that are not, they kind of just get in the way of the design. And then we've just used eyebrows and 29 page library arm shapes as the little eyebrows as well as the uh, little ridges and bumps and things like that on our walnut. And so uh, I think it turned out good. Circles of course are for the eyes, pimple for the dots in the eyes. Then we've got the sunflower. I think that this one was a little bit harder just for stamp space I would say. Not so much just for the mechanics of it but having so many different little petals around it makes the stamp space a lot harder. So those are all actually little arms. Uh, we can go ahead and pull one out just so you can see. You can use just about any 29 page library shape arm that has that little shape to it basically of a petal. Different sizes placed all around it. I've actually got a pebble as the middle part basically for the uh, <laughs> sunflower. You can see that brown part of its face basically. A capsule shape is for the eyes with a pimple as the little glimmer in the eyes and pretty much everything else matches the pea shooter for the most part. But then I have a script for after it's created it will spawn a little star right. This is supposed to be like for the sun. You know of course the sunflower in Plants vs. Zombies makes a sun which is your energy source to create more plants. Uh, you probably don't need to do light. I actually did uh, light or bright because I thought it needed to be brighter but that's actually not true. It will turn it almost white and so you probably don't need to add that adjective to the star right. But the reason that it's a star right and not just a sun is because you actually cannot use the sun as a stamp within that script. You know the game will kind of give you an error or it'll give you a little prompt that says you can't use it. So now we've got a potato mine. This thing is so cute looking. I like it a lot. It looks like a little diglet or something. I just used a pebble as the source object and then put stones or rocks and pebbles all around it as well as the end of a worm to be the little tiny little rocks and pebbles that are around it. Sugar cube once again for the teeth because it has buck teeth like that. Dots are going to be for the little craters. So I'm going to set up a script basically for our potato mine that it's just going to move near, well whenever it moves near an object of a zombie it's going to explode. So again you can make it count down however long you want or whatever. But I give it a minus sign for the little pole I guess on its head and then a sphere of course for the circular dot thing that's on its head and dots are the eyes with a cattail mouth for the smile. That was also the smile for our sunflower mainly because it's just one stamp you know that can kind of look like a smile I mean it doesn't look exactly like the smile of the sunflower in the game which is just a straight up smile but again stamp space was an issue. So now you'll see kind of all of our plants laid out including some other ones that I created it's just I don't like to run these episodes for too long so I'm not going in depth for each one of them but you can kind of get some ideas just from how the ones that I just showed you are created, you know. You can take pieces of them and ideas to create your own versions of them. So yes, it was announced that a new Garden Warfare sequel basically is coming out, or I guess it's a sequel, but it will be fully, I guess, revealed at E3, and so maybe in the near future we should create some Garden Warfare or Garden Warfare 2 Plants vs. Zombies. I think that would be fun, because I feel that these were very fun creations. The, you know, this was a kind of a special episode for me. I really enjoyed creating these characters. So if you're watching this on the day or week that this episode was uploaded, I just want to note that I will be at E3 starting next week, so I'm not going to have a lot of dedicated time for the Scribble Knots episode, so I'm going to kind of bypass the popular vote for one week and do a character that has been voted on over time for quite a long time, actually. We're kind of overdue to create this character, and it just came so close to being the popular vote many times, and I think it needs to be created, so the reason that I'm going to bypass the popular vote just for one week and go right ahead and choose this character is so that I don't really have to wait a few days to see the votes and see what you guys are requesting and stuff. I'm just going to create it right away and upload the episode next Sunday. So I hope you guys enjoy it. We will resume, of course, popular voting, most popular requests after that episode. So I will be keeping an eye on the comments as always. But I love all of you out there in Kentopolis. Thank you so much for your support. So I will catch you on the next vid. And thanks for viewing. Up a present. So I step on the lives, twists and turns, and I made the cycles in with dignity and courage. Now I hope to God that everyone can learn something from what I say, and hopefully you flourish. Getting down to the meta, let's look at it more.